You read that title, right? Your home is a cloud. You're probably thinking I'm crazy. Well, maybe a little. But in all fairness, if you have a router that's connected to the internet, then you can make your home a cloud by using port forwarding. Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technologies. I'm your host, Orist, and in this episode, we're going to be covering port forwarding and how to use that to make your home network a cloud. Let's get started. So first, what is port forwarding? Well, port forwarding is allowing external incoming connections to your home router into your local network using specific ports on your router. Well, why would I use port forwarding? Well, obviously the same reasons you would use a cloud. If you want to have file storage, access a website or a web server, access your home Windows computer using remote desktop protocol, or accessing a Unix Linux server using SSH, all of those will require port forwarding if you're accessing those services outside of your home network. You could think of port forwarding also as poking a tiny hole in your router or your firewall where you're allowing just one port out of the 65,000 ports available to allow incoming connections to. And well, the more services you have, the more ports you'll have to forward. One word of caution I will provide is not to use remote desktop protocol over port forwarding directly because this is just inviting bad actors into your home. There's a safe way to do this, and that's using a VPN and a VPN server. Now that we know what port forwarding is used for, let's go ahead and have an example to explain how it works. Let's say you want to visit a website that you host in your own network, and you want to connect it through a smartphone that's off your local network. You could do this easily by typing in HTTPS, forward slash, forward slash, your router's IP address, and port number that you're forwarding in a browser, and that will initiate a connection to the router. The router will then look at its port forwarding table and say, where do I send connections that are TCP or UDP on port 443? Well, if you set the rule up correctly and tell it to go to the internal web server you have, let's say 192.168.15, on its port 443, it'll send that connection that way, and then once the web server receives it, it'll send it back the same way it came from and to that IP address of the smartphone and the port that initiated the connection. Now that we know what port forwarding is used for, and now that we know how it looks and works, let's go ahead and set it up in a home router. I'll be using a Linksys E1200, but you could do this with practically any router. Let's go ahead and take a look. Now we're going to go into an example home router of a Linksys E1200 and how port forwarding is done. This process will generally be the same for many home routers. However, this one may be different given it it's quite a few years older, but nonetheless, the concepts still apply. So first, we're going to go ahead and log into our router. The general IP address for this is 192.168.11, but go ahead and search your router name and model and you can find out what that is. So now that you're at your router page, just go ahead and type your username and password. This will generally be default as admin admin. It could be something else, and I would look it up if you are. Now, if it's still the default password, I would also recommend changing that. Now that we've logged in, let's go ahead and click on the Applications and Gaming tab. And here, we're going to see the Single Port Forwarding tab. There's also port range forwarding and port range triggering, but I wouldn't worry about that as it's basically the same. Then we have an application name here, and under this section we have a drop-down for common applications. So if I choose FTP, it gives us the default port for FTP, which is 21, the protocol, which is TCP, and then we just have to define an IP address. Since HTTPS is not in the drop-down list, we'll have to write it out ourselves. The port for HTTPS that's the default is 443. So we can use that on the external port and the internal port if we want. HTTPS uses TCP. And then the IP address of our web server that hosts our website is 192.168.1.5. And then we can click Enabled to check it off. Lastly, I do want to mention that you do not need to use default ports. Those are just the default ports set as the standard. However, if I want to make my web server run on 3002, and I want to use the external port of 6001, that's just fine. In this case, you would just have to be sure that you set up the internal web server to use this port when you create it. Now, 
In this case, if I want to actually get to this website and web server, all I have to do is in my browser, I type in the router IP address and then the port 6001 after it, separated by a colon. So you could say 15.9.16.3 colon 6001. Then when I do that, it's going to forward the traffic, being your router, to the internal IP address of 192.168.1.5 to its port 3002. And then that means you get to the web server. So now we want to just go ahead and save it. And that's it. So now we have this rule available. And that about covers it for my explanation on how to port forward. Thanks again for following me in my journey. I appreciate that. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you like this type of content around IT tools and technologies and you want to see more of it, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and click that bell for notifications so you don't miss the next one. Now, would you set up port forwarding in your own home? So would you set up a VPN server, a file server, a website, or any of that stuff so that you can access it when you're away from home? Let me know in the comment section below, and maybe I can make a video describing how to actually set that up. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.